here as a what in what I just gave the keynote speech. Really? Oh, we've got a <laughs> classic here then. Right, you're gonna you're gonna walk these questions then. The first one is what do you understand by a smart city? I think a, a smart city is one that uses technology to its best advantage. For me, a smart city now has to be a very resilient city, one which is, can really adapt and change fast. Uh, the Smart City is the concept that brings the community, academia, universities, industry together. And the intelligence, the sort of intelligence that's in the universities can work with the intelligence in business and the community to make a real difference. The people themselves need to believe in themselves, need to see themselves as part of the future of that smart city and want to feel they can really contribute to that. Everyone should be included in uh, building and developing the city. What will a smart city look like in five years? Hopefully one where technology is completely invisible because at the moment it really isn't. The, the virtual world will mix with, with the real world. Every single organisation has got to actually look at how it can be more resource efficient. There's clearly a tendency that, uh, that cities become strong regions for new innovations. So how do you think universities and communities can work more closely together? I think universities and communities could work more closely together on perhaps smaller scale projects, so really enabling individuals to become involved with learning and with training. I've actually proposed an idea for today and that is about recycling kitchen waste. We need to avoid trying to separate universities and communities. Um, however, I think there is still the issue about making local people who wouldn't normally have contacts with universities making greater demands of universities. I think there's a, a very important cross-pollination of ideas that can happen between lecturers, students, community members, social entrepreneurs. Well, there's a lot of people in academia who want to work with the grain of social action. They want to help people themselves find their own solutions instead of coming in with a new formula. Uh, how can communities impact onto policy more effectively? I think there is a need for a communication. It's about negotiations. Many, many communities, and particularly the one near Salford University, are certainly empowered. Uh, they have a very strong voice. The problem is that that voice isn't plugged in in a, in a um, effective way to how decisions are made. Communities should stop listening to policymakers and should make it themselves and demand it.